What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson. Got a buddy of mine, Luke Longmire. What's going on, Luke? How we doing? How we doing? We are good. Luke's down in sunny Miami while I'm sitting up here in sweaty ass Virginia. <laughs> Beautiful over here. That's awesome. Look, guys, so I wanted to have Luke on the show. Luke and I met, gosh, I get late, late March, right? We were on yeah, the combo trip yeah. together. So yep. throw a couple random people on a jet to Mexico and you get to know each other for a few minutes, you know, might <laughs> no taste that final destination type stuff. But, um, you know, we had a great time connected, hit it off. And Luke just has a incredible story. He's the automation king, everybody. I mean, this guy is just wicked smart, great connections. He's an educator of hundreds of thousands of people, um, speaks thousands tens of thousands of time i mean the guy's just he's done a lot of really really great stuff and his story will motivate you he's got stuff that you need to learn about if you don't know about and so i'm hoping you'll share a little bit today but man luke just welcome to the big dog podcast yeah thank you for having me it's, you know i've been seeing you crush it as well and you know i'm looking forward to this and uh, i appreciate you as well that's awesome man so look tell us Let's go back a little bit. Who's Lucas Longmire? Yeah, so that's a, a very, uh, you know, broad, you know, answer. But uh, I'll go back to, you know, 2015, you know, uh, sorry, when I was 15 years old. So this is probably 2006, 2005, give or take. And, um, you know, I, I share my story a lot just to inspire, motivate a lot of people because a lot of people think you got to be super successful MBA degree or, you know, all these, you know, amazing, you know, accolades, but, you know, all you have to do is, you know, have a, a burning desire and go after your dreams. You know, at 15 years old, I was really, really good at football. Um, and, um, you know, I saw myself playing division one football, you know, and football was life. Um, all I knew was football, you know, I, I was all conference, all conference. Um, at one point, you know, was getting a scholarship and I hurt my shoulder. I shattered my shoulder and um, my sophomore, you now going into my junior year and I was out for my whole junior year, had a surgery and they actually thought it was cancer. You know, at one point, oh, wow. you know, going to uh, Raleigh Children's Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana, it's a really big, you know, cancer, um, you know, leading, leading the country, you know, when it comes to that. And I was going from hospital, 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 and they couldn't f figure out what was wrong with it. You know, it was like a lump on my shoulder, you know, come to find out I just broke my clavicle. And, um, you know, in doing so, I lost football. They put me on prescription medication, uh, Vicodin, and I started getting addicted to the Vicodin because they kept prescribing it, kept prescribing it. Oh, man. And, okay. um, you know, I went kind of like to a, a wrong path because when football, you know, I'm a very obsessive person, you know, when I, you know, a lot of people are that are successful, you know, and um, just like you with your, your, your business. And um, in doing so, I had this big, you know, this big lane, you know, unfulfilled. There's nothing there anymore because I, I lost football. So right. I started, you know, dealing drugs, you know, and at a, at a very high rate, you know, bigger rate, if you will. Um, you know, going into my senior year, you know, freshman in college, you know, I was making, you know, 100K a year, 200K a year. Um, and doing so, and next thing I know, um, you know, my senior year, going back to that is uh, I, I was going to, you know, commit, you know, to a scholarship for, for football and I had to have surgery again. So oh, wow. I, I, yeah, it was crazy. And it was very scary for me because uh, my shoulder regrew. I was going through a growth spurt and my shoulder regrew wrong. So they had to, you know, get into the bone, shave off the bone. And once again, you know, like this is life. Like if without right. football at that point, I didn't know what I was going to do. And um, I was lost, confused, you know, just, you know, trying to find something. And where I found is like when I was in football, I was the jock center of stage, you know, the, the big man on campus, you know, and I had that void there. You know, looking back, I, I, I see it now, but, you know, at the time I didn't really know. So when you're you're dealing, right, you're the big man, you know, you're everybody's coming to you, you know, hey, can I get some smoke, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, I felt that void, you know, uh, filled. And, you know, next thing I know, um, they prescribe more Vicodin, you know, and everything like that. And, um, you know, especially what's going on in this world now with all the fentanyl, if you guys have you know, anybody that's watching, you know, seen there's a big epidemic when it comes to prescription stuff. 
Um, and next thing I know, you know, I get addicted uh, to Vicodin even more. And when I get, you know, got out of college or got out of high school, I barely graduated high school. Um, you know, I don't even know how. Somehow I passed with a two point something. And I went to, to college and I remember I was in business school. You know, I, I viewed myself as a business person, you know, hustling sure. the streets. And uh, I raised my hand my freshman year in business class. I said, you know, Mr. Smith, I forget the name. I said, do you own a business? He said, no. I said, okay, cool. I was like, do you make 100000 a year? He said, no. I was like, well, how am I going to learn how to run a business from you if I make more money than you and you've never ran a business? That's a fair question. <laughs> right? I'm sure he received it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kicked me out of the class. Um, <laughs> And next thing I know, I was like, man, this isn't for me. You know, college, there's a, a chapter in Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill talk about specialized knowledge versus generalized knowledge. And I was like, this is not what I want to do. This isn't, you know, anything, you know, it's just not for me. Right. I dropped out of college, you know, my freshman year, like a, a half a semester in. And, you know, my, my dealing, you know, grew. So I was like, let me focus on this. Okay. And, um, and doing so, you know, I started making more money, but, you know, the law started catching up. And um, in doing so, you know, still, you know, uh, you know, popping pills here and there, you know, started doing it more and more. And next thing I know, I got to a place where, you know, I was, you know, all by myself, you know, very lonely spot. You know, I had money, but like I, I didn't really have friends, you know, running around the wrong women, you know, at the clubs, you know, and everything like that. It was a very toxic life. And um, got in trouble. Well, I went to jail, you know, a handful of times, got bailed out, bailed out, you know, weekend in jail, nothing crazy. But then um, I got in trouble. They, they, they found, um, you know, like a, you know, small, you know, sack of, of weed on me. And then um, secondly is I had a lot of money on me. So they tried to hit me with a, a big charge. In, in doing so, I got dropped to a misdemeanor, but they maxed me out. So I had to do a, a six months in jail. Okay. That was my first like exposure to real jail, you know, like going into the, the the drunk tank, the holding tank, weekend in jail. You know, you're there by yourself. But now I'm in there with with people that are like I didn't consider myself a criminal, like I sold, right. you know, and whatnot. You're with there with real are, criminals now. Yeah, <laughs> professional criminals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, I'm in there with people that are, you know, home invasions, A felonies, B felonies. I'm like, man, you know, this isn't for me. And I'm in there in jail for six months. I get out of jail and I'm on house arrest this time. And I'm like, I'm going to be a smarter, you know, hustler. I'm going to do it, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, not get caught this time. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know, probably about two months later, I violate my probation. Um, I get in trouble again and I do another six months in jail. And uh, the fourth day I was in there, there's a book, you know, if you're, you're watching this, you know, listen to this, grab the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I forget, uh, chapter nine, if I'm not mistaken, it talks about decision. And I made a decision on that fourth day, I would never go back, I'll never hurt my mom, never hurt, you know, myself, and I would start fresh. Um, but the cool thing is, you know, diving deep here really quick and pulling it back is I had the burning desire. You know, I had yeah. the burning desire of time freedom and financial freedom. I just was doing it in a very illegal way. So when I got out of jail, part of my plea was to go to rehab. So I went to rehab for uh, six months and I, and I lived in a halfway house for a year and a half. Okay. Um, no car, no license, no job, probation on three counties. I had to report to three different probation officers. Um, it was definitely the lowest point in my life. And you said um, the halfway house was a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Is that normal for that long? No, it's not. I kind of use it as a crutch because like um, it was right next to my job where the halfway house was. And okay. um, I walked to, to Lowe's for a year, about a year and a half. I had a job there. But um, I used it as a crush to stack up money, you know, and so forth. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have a car. I wanted to stay at the halfway house until all my probation stuff settled down and whatnot. It, really, it showed really good on the report, so to speak. Um, you know, did the 90 days and 90 meetings or 90 meetings and 90 days for AA, NA, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, you know. And I went through that whole, that whole thing, but it was such a, a learning experience. I'm so grateful for it. Um, because I learned so much, you know, I got a better relationship with my higher power, God, you know, um, got a better relationship with my mom, 
got my first exposure to Think and Grow Rich, you know, spiritual laws of success, you know, and it was really uh, cool, not at the time, but looking back to kind of like, you know, break me down, you know, God, universe, whatever you choose to believe in broke me down and humble myself because I was egotistical, yeah. you know, um, just full of myself, you know, and, and just really, really on, on a bad path. And next thing I know, right, um, next thing I know, um, we we get to a place where, you know, I, I can buy a car now, right? And in jail, um, you can't eat off three meals, right? You can't eat off three meals in jail. So right. um, <laughs> you ever play spades? Yep. Okay. So I got really, really good at spades okay. and uh, started gaming. I am not. My wife is brilliant. I am not. <laughs> yeah um it's a really cool game I, I i started getting really good at it you know started betting meals and you know soups which is ramen ramen uh ramen soups and uh was eating a lot more and in jail like you have you know uh basically you have car games you can you know talk to people or you can read books or work out so i found bodybuilding um in the gym you know this is putting like hundreds of books in a big, you know, uh, duffel bag and doing curls, doing right. school crushers, you know, doing pull-ups <laughs> on the the bars. I mean, hundreds of push-ups, incline, decline. Um, and I found love with, uh, with working out, you know, and um, speeding this up a little bit, got out, of, got out of rehab, got out of halfway house, got a car, was at Lowe's, got a job at a gym. I was like, man, I love working out. Why not work at a gym? You know, and doing so, um, you know, I got a job at the gym. I worked myself up to general manager. Now I was like, man, this is the life. You know, I had all, I had it all figured out. Right. And I was making six figures a year. Um, and, uh, you know, next thing I know, I was like, man, you know, four years later, you know, making, you know, in my, you know, back then a, lot, a decent amount of money. But then I became time broke. I, I figured out that if you don't have your time, that's the most important thing. So I was making, you know, quote unquote, good money at the time. But like, I was either at work, on my way home from work, um, you know, uh, thinking about work for the like the night before, you right. know, and everything like that. So my whole life revolved around my job. Um, four years into it, I got a message on Facebook. And this is kind of really where, you know, where I'm at today, is I got a message on Facebook. He's like, hey, bro, have you ever heard of Forex? And I was like, not a not a clue. And uh, it was a network marketing company, very okay. similar like Herbalife, Amway, et cetera. But it was a Forex network marketing company. And I was like, um, this looks like a Ponzi, you know, a scam, right. you know. And, you know, I still had a little weird thing. I was like, man, I could run up a bag really quick if it's legal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hey, why not? Right. Uh, it turned out to be very legal. And um, I became really good at it. And I was like, I'm already promoting and networking a gym, right? Right. Personal training, gym memberships, coming to the gym, seven day pass, workout, workout. I was like, I could take the same hustling skills that I did in the streets, right? You know, never taking a day off, next client, next client. Same thing I learned at the gym, promoting marketing and just do it to this. Sure. And I did that. And, um, you know, and, and I, I skyrocketed. Um my first month, you know, um, I, I demoted myself or second, sorry, second month, I demoted myself from general manager, six figures a year to a regular sales associate. About six months later, I demoted myself from a regular sales associate, associate to part time. And then after a year, I retired myself um, from that first message. Um, two years later, retired my wife, three years moved out to, um, to California. You know, now I'm down here in Miami. You know, been able to create my own app, 250,000 students, spoken in 33 countries, you know, over 200, 300 speaking engagements, um, you know, all around the world. And, and now it's just like, now my, my like I made all the money, the millions and whatnot, but now my passion is to help other people, teach true financial literacy. And yeah. this is kind of like my purpose, if you will, is because the average person does not know what uh how, how to manage money let alone how to create money how to attract money how to put it to work you know most people have a job a business but they're a business operator not a business owner and the true wealth is passive income so my mission now is financial literacy and wealth building you know to to really impact the masses so that's a a, a broad answer you know to your question no man that's amazing and i just i think that you know so many people can 
relate in so many different ways to what you have going on and went through because anybody who's listening to this, you know, has those, I think all kids, most kids, right. You're coming up. It's like, this is what I'm going to be. This mm-hmm. is what I'm going to do for you. It was football. For me, it was, I'm going to go to law school. I'm going to be a lawyer. Right. Yet I'm like the worst student on the planet. So why that made <laughs> sense for me, I, I, I don't know, but you have these things that are what you're supposed to do. And inevitably at some point, there's going to come a moment of failure. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not like a complete failure, but there's going to become a moment of test, right? And it's like, is this actually the path you're supposed to be on? You know, or are you going to, do you really want it? Or are you going to buckle and fold to something else? 100%. And, you know, it's, I don't necessarily know that, um, like you're supposed to always not buckle and and move through it. You know, I think there's a lot to say to where no shit happened. The trajectory I had in place for my life completely changed. Instead of going to college and playing D one ball, I end up dealing and going to prison, right? Mm-hmm. I'm in jail now. I'm in a halfway house, you know, uh, people that I talked to and played against in school played with or met at different camps. And man, I see them on TV playing while I'm out here working at Lowe's, walking to work for a year and doing all these different things. And there can be these parts in people's lives where it's like, what am I going to do with that? Mm -hmm. But that walk into Lowe's for a year had a very intentional purpose Yes, for your journey, right? For your path. And it, cause it could have been easy to, every time you get in trouble, you get out, go right back to it, get in trouble Mm -hmm. again, go to jail for a little while, get out. I mean, this is the cycle. I mean, we all know people that that literally is the cycle they'll do for the rest of their life. Yep. Nonstop. But at a certain point, the decision was, hey, I always expected and wanted more for my life than this. What am I going to do to make it happen? 100%. Right. And, and people, and you have to choose. The, the path is fine. Okay. The path wasn't what I envisioned. No big deal. But now what am I going to do with these lessons that I've learned? Am mm-hmm. I going to keep repeating? Because I know exactly what I'm going to get if I keep repeating this. <laughs> Facts. I know exactly what I'm going to get. So to your, to your point where I thought it was great, and I hope everybody heard it, you know, I took that same hustle, that same motivation, the same lessons, and I applied them from the street to the gym. And then I added some more lessons at the gym when I started picking up actual like marketing techniques in promotion Mm -hmm. and how do I take that energy and apply it to this new thing? And you're doing the same thing anyway. You just figured out a way to, to, to scale it. Right. And now look, because when you were, if you had stayed healthy and you'd gone on and played division one ball and likely been done, you know, after a couple of years in college, if you stayed healthy, (laughs) because you're not going pro, that's so small. Now, now, where are you at? How far are you behind on the mission that was actually your true path? You just couldn't see back then. Exactly. And I, God is always, you know, I choose to believe in God and, and whatnot and higher power, whatever you want to call it. And it's just like, looking back, I needed to go through everything to get to where I'm at today. You 100%. know, a lot of people are like, well, I'm sorry for you. It's hard, you know, sorry to hear that. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm so grateful for it. You know, yeah. and it's just like that, those, like, there's, I always tell people this is like, like you, there are things I went through. I, I can't learn without the experience of it. Right. You know, you can't learn it through a book. You can't learn it through a mentor or a coach. You got to experience it to learn it. And then, you know, take what you learn and apply it to a different vehicle. So you're, you're spot on. Yeah. Um, my producer, Jonathan, who's, he's in the studio over here, you know, he's a, he's a rapper. It, it, it's, he's, he's so good. His lyrics are incredible. And the thing is, and I think about it with Jonathan, I think about it with, with other artists, you're not going to have that fire. You're not going to have the stories mm-hmm. to tell. And yeah, you gotta, you gotta fire them up a little bit sometimes, you know, make it a little better for the record. But it's like, if you hadn't had these choices, these experiences in life, these failures, it, you can't put that to paper. Mm-hmm. You can't put that into a mic. You can't, cause you don't know it. It's, it, it, it won't come off the same. 
when yep. you're sharing what you do now with people, you're sharing from the point of view of what it's done in your life and for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a, a hard sell. It's not a convincing. I'm just telling you what it's done in my life. Right. And so this is something that potentially you can do, you know, as well. This is how I'm sharing the opportunity with you. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't know about it had life not forced you to make different decisions than what you had planned. You got to get that content from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit about, um, you know, I, I think people have a hard time understanding that whole concept of automation and passive income. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks, well, if I'm going to make money, I've got to go to work and make it. And I'm going to do my job and I'm going to clock in and clock out. And, and again, you know, exchange of my time for someone to give me money. And I don't think people truly understand passive income. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, hundred percent. And, you know, that's kind of my mission now, you know, where I'm at today is you have basically four different quadrants, you know, and the first quadrant is employee uh, quadrant, which is about 60 to 70% of people. And that goes back to, you know, what we're taught in school. And that's why I like my biggest mission is to teach financial literacy, you know, and not to overthrow, not the quiet word, but to change the whole educational system because we're taught what go to school, get good grades, right? Graduate high school, go to college, get good grades, get a degree, get in debt for all the college, right? And then now we get a certification that's basically worth nothing now. And then from there, get that job, work a job for 50, 40, 60, 70 years, whatever that number is. And then you get, you know, your retirement check or, you know, Social Security. And that's what people call a life, you know, get yeah. a job for five days a week. Right now it's weekend. Saturday is like, woo, Saturday. Now Sunday comes along. It's like kind of woo. But then it's like, man, I got to go to work tomorrow. Right. Get one vacation a year. That's not living. That's existing. You know, yeah. and um, that's the, how 70% of people live their life. They're not truly living. They don't know what's on the other end, you know, what they can truly be. You know, and we're the highest form of, of beings. We're human beings, right? We're, we're given, you know, imagination that animals don't have. We're, getting per, we're given perception, will, you know, reasoning, et cetera. So we're limiting ourselves, but that comes back to the whole educational system putting us down, right? And doctrine, right. programming us to be an employee. That's part of you know, what the elites and the big players do. Because the thing is, if we teach everybody to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, who's going to be the employees? Right. Yep. Right. So you have that quadrant the employee. Then you have the second quadrant where you, you're um, self-employed, right? And there are a lot of people, and this is kind of where I was at the gym. I was making all this money, but, you know, I was the job. If I didn't show up, I didn't make money. Right. Um, you know, I got to sell, I got to manage, I got to coach. And, and if I don't show up, that check doesn't come in. So now we become the job and we're making a decent amount of money, but we have no time freedom. You know, right. so that's a small percentage right there, about 10%, 10 to 15%. You know, as a self employed, you know, and then you have the quadrant where the business owner, um, where a lot of business owners, they're not really business owners because if they step away from the business, is the business going to continue to run? So right. they fall into the business operator, right? It's their business, right? They're their baby, but they're in, you know, in the trenches. They're doing the sales calls. They're doing the onboarding, the hiring, the firing. They're, they're not delegating. Um, that's a small percentage, you know, that's like the 5%. You know, then you have the 1% the the investor quadrant where your money is actually working for you, you know? And, uh, you know, this is what I, I really, you know, teach and coach people to get to is, it's not bad to have a job. It's not, you know, not good to have a job, but it's not good to just, just have a job, you know, right. work on that thing that you truly love. So trust me, you weren't sent here to life to, to have a life. Your purpose isn't to work at Kmart. You know, you weren't sent here to, to work at, you know, uh, a gas station or Toys R Us or whatever, you know, job it is, right? Use your job to fund and go after your entrepreneurial career. Like what is your passion? What, what motivates you to get up and just take over, you know, life, you know, and right, that's what we right. want to do and create that passive income, right? Whether it's Forex automation, crypto automation, Airbnb rentals, you know, something along the lines of, of assets creating cash flow. Now where you create that cash flow, 
Now you can go focus, so you can quit your job, go focus on a nonprofit, go focus on helping kids, you know, with, with dogs, you know, with, with you, whatever it is, you got to find your passion, your, your passion income, your active income, right. create that passive income. Because the thing is, if you, if you never get passive income, you're going to be working until you die. Right. right. And that equals no time freedom to time with your kids. So my dad died when I was five years old. Never had a male role model, never had someone to teach me how to work on a car, how to shave, how to be a, a man, right? So my biggest thing is when, when you know, the streets and, you know, my whole story that I shared is I wanted time freedom, financial freedom. So that's why I worked so hard, believed so much, and, and just put in the, the physical work, the spiritual work to get to time freedom, financial freedom. Because when I do have kids, which I don't yet with my wife, I want to be there at, at, at their, my son's baseball game. Yeah. You know, I want to be there at my, my daughter's ballerina school. You know, I want to be the coach or cheering on, go, baby, go. You know, I don't want to be like, oh, well, I can buy your school, take you to private school. I can buy all this stuff. But the kids want your time. Right. That's the most valuable thing. So I realized when I didn't have a dad, I want to give my future kids everything that I didn't have, you know, yeah. and I set up my life where I make you know, my active income is my lowest income, you know, it's probably 10 20% of my right. whole, you know, income where my passive income, if I wake up, if I don't wake up tomorrow, my my family is still getting paid, you know, through automations, life insurance, you know, bonds, everything. Um, so it's very, very important to, to start small, you know, if you don't have a lot of capital, you know, find a mentor, find a coach, you know, and kind of pivoting, but coming back to this, is a lot of people don't know where to start. And that's right. that's cool. But don't just invest and lose your money. You know, you want to find a coach, a mentor, a program, a mastermind, whatever that looks like, invest in that because that cuts the learning curve in half. How to master 100%. anything is two things. Find a coach, find a mentor, and repetition. That's how to get good at anything. So, you know, it's crucial to get passive income. It's a necessity. You know, you talk about you know, finding that coach and how much that um, expedites your process, right? And mm -hmm. people are like, well, I just, I can't see investing in something like that, or I can't. And I'm like, man, you're literally paying for, for, for a cheat code. Like, do you remember, like, I was never big into video games. That was never my thing, right? But I had a lot of friends who were. And I'd play mm -hmm. from time to time, and I'd be so pissed off because I'm trying to hack away, and they, you know, up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B, exactly. whatever. My head explodes. I'm done. And they just keep doing it over and over again. A couple of them would figure that stuff out. But then there was the other ones who just, they would know somebody. They'd tell them the code. They'd use the cheat code. Now they're dominant. Now you lose. <laughs> Get it? Now I lose, right? So I'm done because no one's one sharing the cheat code with me. I don't know the nerd to talk to to get the cheat code. And so I'm just in a spot. So I just don't like playing and I'm competitive. I don't want to do yeah, shit I'm right. not good at. Or if I can't get good at it, I'm just, I'm out. I'm done. I'm out, please. You know, <laughs> but the thing is in business, ah, step back in life, you know, if, if there's a place you're, you're pretty set and very clear you know, emotionally and spiritually on, on what you see for your life mm -hmm. and that vision for your life. And there's someone who's living or representing a version of it. That's pretty close. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. You might want to figure out how to spend some time with them. You might want to mm -hmm. figure out how you can add value to their life. And maybe they're interested in adding value to yours. You know, mm -hmm. the great thing is that, you know, with, with these coaches and stuff, and like you do with your people, with your coaching programs and Apex and Arte, and there's so many great ones out there. It's it, okay. You worry about, all right, well, what value am I bringing? Yeah. That'll work itself out. You know, don't, don't just reach out and be like, Hey, can I holler at you for a minute? Can I pick your brain, yeah. join their courses, join their mm -hmm. programs, invest that there's your access there. It's like, oh, that's that's so expensive or or whatever. Man, do a low level something. See if that game. helps. What can what can you flip that into? And now it's like, okay, I'm in my second year of business, let's say, and by joining a by hiring a coach or joining a, a network, a group, man, you can be operating with your 10 knowledge and wisdom. 
-hmm. That doesn't mean year 10 business decisions are what you should be making and implementing those plays necessarily. But I guarantee you, you're going to go from year two to year four, six, eight, and 10 much quicker and a much, you know, better balanced way than the person you're paying to coach you on it Mm -hmm. because they went through the struggles. Oh yeah. They went through the pains and you can create all that bullshit yourself because that's guaranteed going to happen. Or someone can give you a blueprint. Hey, here's the map. You want to turn left here. Definitely don't go right. You go right. Exactly. Woman in business, you're done. And now you're wondering like, oh man, that cost me a hundred thousand dollars because of that bad business decision. But you didn't want to spend twenty thousand dollars a year on a coach that could have had you that hundred thousand dollar loss could have been, you know, seven figure win. Mm -hmm. And they just look at it so differently. And I know, you know, for me, when I started getting in the room with folks like you you know, and, and, and apex and stuff like that. It's just changed the whole game. Mm-hmm. It changed everything. Cause even some of us who, and I would say I was having some success, you know, before getting in the room, but it was success based on a barometer of what I thought success exactly. looked like, you know, and then you like peel the curtain back. You're like, Oh shit. So much I'm, not, I'm not, there's so many levels to this. I, <laughs> I'm not doing anything at yeah. all. You know, and so it, it it's a big deal. Bring that coach in, get that wisdom, get that knowledge and figure out how it applies to your business, figure out how it applies mm-hmm. to your life. There are no new problems. There are no new issues in business. There's your unique, you know, circumstances around that problem, Situation. but it's all the same problems, right? We lost him. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, you're good. You're good. So, you know, no new problems, just your unique circumstances around that problem. That being with the right people can help you work through. So it doesn't become catastrophic. This has got to be minor. But you're going to be willing to to put yourself out there and invest. So you, I think it's so interesting. You get, you're, you're managing the gym. You're working that job. You're, you're trading your time for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You get a random message on Facebook. And this is what? Three, four years ago? Oh, um, this is 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're about six years ago now. Yep. And that person ends up being a mentor of yours? Yeah. So he was in a network marketing company. Um, that's when I got my first exposure to personal development, you know. Yeah. Zig Ziglar, um, Les Brown, you know, Tony Les. Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. All those people. And uh you know, that really made that shift, you know, and um, if I once again, if I didn't go to jail, didn't go to all that, didn't develop, you know, a passion for working out, wouldn't want to go work out in gym and it just the uh, transpiring events for sure. That's so crazy. So what's next? What's the big thing you're working on now for you and, and your students? I mean, you teach so many people and and share so much content and knowledge. You know, what's what's the big thing for Luke Longmire now? So now, like I said, it, it's more about the, the uh, you know, philanthropy and, and just helping the world. And, you know, my vision is, is, is you know, to you, the viewers here might sound, you know, kind of crazy or huge, but there's no such thing as big or small. It's just your perspective. Um, but like where I see myself is, you know, creating, you know, the, the, the Harvard, the Yale of financial literacy, you know, when it comes to your credit, how to make it LLC, how to create goals, how to, you know, find the belief to, to go after your goals and desires. And um, I, I, you know, getting to the mentorship and getting back to your question is, you know, 2019, I spent about 150,000 between my wife and I and, and mentorship from Bob Proctor. And um, it was the best, best hands down investment that I ever made. You know, um, as I invested more in mentorship and coaching, I grew, you know, my income yeah. skyrocketed. And in doing so with working with Bob, I found what my, my true passion uh, was, you know, is to create an educational center all around the world. So every state, you know, have a, a financial literacy, wealth building, you know, school for, for entrepreneurs. So they can come in here, figure out what they truly want. So what, what I realized is getting out of 18, getting out of high school is no one knows what they want. And I'm not against college, but I kind of am a little bit like Gary sure. V talks about. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, nothing like super, super against college, but it teaches you programs you'd be employed, you know, and that, that certification, that business, you know, thing. My mom's still paying off her master's degree or we're paying off together or whatever from 2000 or sorry, 1999, you yeah. know, and it, it, it's just a, a rat race, you know, for lack of a better word, scam, you know, to and, and don't get me wrong. College can be good, but majority of the times it, it's just a, a death trap in financial debt. So what I want to create, what I'm, you know, going to create is like, have you ever seen X-Men at the building? Yeah. You know, where you got Cyclops and Wolverine and everything like that. So a building similar to that, but each, you know, each room is teaching health and wellness. Uh, One room's, you know, credit. One room is how to, you know, create funnels. One room is, you know, spiritual laws, what I teach, you know, um, one room is like Forex and crypto. Same thing with, with what I got. Um, maybe it's uh, how to start a startup business, you know, how yeah. to leverage your credit. So each little category of an entrepreneur to go out there and live the life they truly desire and reshift and kind of, you know, pivot away from traditional education, you know, learn your ABCs, you know, math, you know, simple math. But when's the last yeah. time you use the Pat, I can't even pronounce it, the Pythagorean theorem or Bro, acute or two single? No clue. I, no never. Clue. Look, so this, this, all- this is me. This is me doing math. Okay. That's exactly a calculator. <laughs> You know, I can do long division or, you know, huge <laughs> multiplication, you know, and, and whatnot. You know, you need to learn the basics, but there's a lot of right. stuff like, you know, if you want to learn geometry, you're going to be engineer. Go for it. But yep. majority of people aren't going to be engineer. You know, right. same thing with uh, ICP. I think it was called integrated chemistry and physics. Like, I've never done anatomy in life. Like, why am I cutting up a frog? Like, yeah. makes no sense. So like getting like to 16, 18 to show people that, you know, an entrepreneur, how to, how to start a YouTube channel, you know, do e-commerce, find that vehicle for you to go out there and live yeah. that life and then scale it, you know, and through these vehicles it, it's a, you know, to create an educational system um, that can really revolutionize, you know, imagine us with our knowledge at 10, 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? And then oh, next, thing, yeah. next level. And then the next generation. So we can completely shift the human race to go out there and, and, and excel instead of, you know, majority of people, 70, 80 percent of people now is just, you know, they're they're just they're they're drifters. They go to work, they go, yep. they come home from work, eat, and they do that cycle. But over for those over. first 18, 22 years, every day has been telling you what to do go to school. Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you some stuff. Go to school. We're going to tell yep. you some more stuff. Go to school now. You know, it's, you know, those last four years or five years or six years, depending on what program that you're kind of sold on thinking as an 18 year old kid, you're interested in doing, mm-hmm. you know, it, you're taking on hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt that is gamed to, to, to crush you. It's game yeah. to keep you in that system of, of clocking in and clocking out. And we were just, so my phase with family is a little different than yours. My son is going into his senior year of high school. My daughter is going to be a sophomore. Um, my son has decided right now, hey, he's going to come work in our family business. He's actually started today, actually started cool. um, going through the certification process to become a dog trainer. He's been watching me do it for eight, nine years. And now he's going to go through our our school. And, you know, he'll graduate next year. He's probably going to take, oh, well, he's not probably, he's going to take classes at the community college. So if he decides, man, working for dog sucks or working for dad sucks, I'm not trying to do this. He wants to go to school. He'll be able to transfer and he's not behind. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's the opportunity. And we were having Sunday supper last night and my nephews were over and friends and my mom and grandmother and, you know, the family's there obviously. And we were talking with our friends and like, well, what's, what's my nephew want to do? What's he want to be? Cause he's looking at school and he plays basketball and he might have some opportunities to play basketball and, in college. And so there's all kinds of different opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about these career interests. I'm like, who the hell at 17 years old wants to be a, a whatever my son's girlfriend, she's talking about um, this job. I can't even say it like a, I'm going to say it wrong. It's not a phlebotomist or something like a blood doctor. I I don't know. I'm screwing it up. I'm like, how the hell do you know at 17 years old that I, I want to do that? How do you know? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, since I was like five, I was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. Why did I say I wanted to be a lawyer? Because in my mind, lawyers were the most elite. They made the most income. And it was, you know, the best setup situation. Being a kid who comes from nothing, had nothing, knowing that I wanted something different. I'm like, I'm going to be a lawyer because everything you see of lawyers, it is success. Yeah, right. Facts. So I equated that with with financial success. But the reality is. Lawyers, they sell a whole lot of time for at the end of the day, not a whole lot of money. Yeah, they're Except a lot of miserable. Yeah, that top like one percent of that. So I'm sitting here thinking, man, how do these kids are they supposed to to know when you make this commitment to the track you're going to be on in school? And if you change your mind now, you got to add a year or two to school and another fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars of debt. And it was just mean. it was stressing me out because I'm like, I went that path. <laughs> and I'm training some dogs. I mean, nobody would have told me that's what I was going to do. Yeah. You know, but it's, it, it took life and experiences for me to figure out what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do more importantly. Mm -hmm. And I knew I'm a shit employee. I knew Same that. Time. And so Same. I knew I had to figure out, you know, how to do something for myself. So I haven't had a lot of jobs as an employee. I did good the ones I was at. A couple of them, I think I did great. But the back of my mind the entire time. How do I get out of here? <laughs> how, do, how, do, how do I just kind of run with my own thing and, <laughs> and, and do that? But, you know, as a kid, because of what you're taught, unless you have the, the family with the knowledge and mindset mm -hmm. to be teaching that, that development and that financial development, you know, it, my family didn't have that coming up. And so for the last couple of years, we've been trying to teach my kids, hey, these are things exactly. we need to do. But I'm still learning. We were just on a call earlier today, and you were sharing some strategies with me, and we were talking about some things. I'm like, oh, damn. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm way off the ball right now. You know, there, there's some stuff I need to add to the toolbox. And no so you always have to be open to learning. But so many people, uh, they, how the system is set up, the education piece is set up, it doesn't allow for anything different. Mm -hmm. Anything different has to be a scam. When you got that message on Facebook that day, your mind immediately went to, what kind of oh, scam is this? My wife, so I took right? her home to my wife and I told her about it. She's like, no, you're not doing that. I'm like, babe, but th he said this could happen, this could happen. She's like, yeah, it's a scam. I'm like, I, I pulled the whole thing. Well, it's my 200 bucks to join. It's my money. Right. I'm going yeah. to do it. And just piggybacking off what you said about the, the school system is like your program from five years old. They teach you what to think, not yeah. how to think. Yeah. And your program for so long, your it's called your neural pathways, and your neural pathways are thinking this for so long to get over here to think a different way is going to take repetition and everything yeah. like that. And it, it's just like, why not pay a mentor, uh, you know, 50K, 25K, wherever the number is. Someone that has experience, that has proven results, that's doing it in real life, instead of going paying that college for, you know, yeah. theory. Yep. Yeah. Expedite that process. And that's one thing we've told our kids. I'm like, look, you want to go to school? No problem. My daughter, I mean, she's 15. She could change her mind, whatever. But she is hell bent. No, I'm going to college. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have fun and I want to have the experience. And, you know, I'm trying to get her to become a veterinarian. I'm like, can we get I mean, you kind of need this angle into our business so we can cover everything. Nobody wants to be a vet. Um, and she jokes around about it, but I think she'll change her mind. But, you know, I'm like, maybe we should have a, a decent idea of getting some experiences first before committing to, to a path that you may not need. I'm all about it. To your point about engineers, teachers, um, you know, doctors, lawyers, if it's a very specific path you're going down, you've got yep. to do that, right? You've got to do that. I don't want you paying 50 grand and go and watch somebody do heart surgery for a, a couple of months. And now you're going to go do heart surgery. <laughs> nope. I need you to go through that eight, 12 year track right. so that when I fall out, I need you fixing me. Right. So, but there's just, it's got to be the options there. And I'm with you. I'm not against it. I just want to make sure we're preparing kids to have, as much information as possible so that they can actually make the best decision that an 18 year old kid can make at the time that you would expect an 18 year old kid to make, not just have this pressure that society has 
of you're not going to be successful if you do not go to college. Mm -hmm. When I would push back and challenge and say, the vast majority of people that I would consider to be successful um, did not go to college or they did very shitty in college and they sure as hell very rarely are actually doing what they went to college to do. Yep. Um, you know, so it's, it, it's tough and it's tough. And I think that's where it comes down to us taking responsibility for our families yep. and not just our kids, but like our nieces and our nephews and, and stuff like that and, and educating and sharing our experiences that are different from what everything else is going to be pushing. Mm -hmm. And then when there is that person, that 18 year old kid who's bold enough to say, Hey, you know what? I think not going that normal route is for me. I do have other interests I'd like to pursue, you know, supporting the hell out of them oh, 100%. and getting them in the right place. And I had told my kids, I'm like, look, you decide you want to go to school. I've told friends for years. If my kids come to me and they're like, Hey daddy, I got a, an idea, a business idea. This is something I would like to try. I would take the college money and fund that vision they have to get started, knowing that they may and likely will lose all of it mm -hmm. and tank. But guess what? They've got a freaking lifetime to recover from it. Yeah. And they have that's... a life, they have a lifetime to go to college and, and do that whole deal. And the lessons they're gonna learn chasing something that they're passionate about, I think is worth the risk every time. Mm -hmm. because if, if you're chasing something you're passionate about and you figure out a way to monetize it and, and build a life around something that you're passionate about, not a job that you got to go to. I couldn't think of anything better for my kids. Mm -hmm. I agree. But, but I don't feel like that's what everybody says. Well, I want my kids to be happy, but are we resourcing them to actually be happy? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Like one thing, go ahead. No, please. Uh, one thing that, the, you know, get into the science, you know, uh, I don't know about for women, but for men, you know, the brain isn't fully developed until you're 25, you know, oh, I believe that and, for me. <laughs> and so like, how do you expect, like when I was 18, 19, I was an adult, you know, now I'm 32. I'm like, yo, 18, 19, you're, a, you're, you're an old kid. You're not even a right. young adult, you're an old kid. So how can you expect someone to know exactly what they want when they've been going to school for, you know, being being taught, you know, X, Y, Z in school, you have no life experience, yeah. you know? So it's very important to like either, you know, f figure out what you want, but like give yourself grace and give yourself time. And like society puts all this pressure on you to make a decision. You know, yeah. people pressure you to get in the army or the Navy or people pressure you to go to college or you have to have it all figured out. And that's where mental you know, health comes into play because, you know, especially for men, they, you, you're the, the breadwinner or supposed to be. Right. Um, yeah. And you're supposed to have it all figured out. You're supposed to be the money maker. And next thing you know, you're 22, 23 and you have, you know, life not even figured out at all. And that's completely fine, though. You know, yeah. and, and just I, I love what you said about educating our kids because, as you know, a, a future parent, you know, and you can attest to this, I'm sure is, you know, we have a responsibility, we have a duty to teach our kids to, to give them a better life where our ceiling is their floor, you yeah. know, and they can go out, they're going to take, take everything that we've taught, but we got to be an example for them, not just yep. a, as parents, but as the community, you know, if we can impact our household, we can impact, you know, the, our friends, we can impact our friends, we can impact you know, our, our community, then our city, then our state. And that's how you, but it starts with us. hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. I think there's a lot of power in that. And it's, it's people just got to be comfortable to push back. And the thing that's funny is I look at all the bullshit stuff people make noise about and want to argue about and make sure their voices are heard over. And then things that really matter and really important, nobody will say anything against because that's kind of against the norm. I mean, you can't yeah. be freaking kidding me right now, but that's a whole nother 10 day podcast. <laughs> Look, man, I want to honor your time. I appreciate you so much, so much taking time out of your day to jump on here with us. What is the best way, Luke, for people to connect with you, find out more about you, find out about your courses and your, your coaching network and stuff? Yeah. So I would say uh, on my two social media platforms, I'm very active is Facebook and Instagram. Um, so Instagram is uh, uh, long money, Luke and uh, long money, Luke, that Luke is L U C. Yep. Right there. 
And then on Facebook, it's Lucas Longmire. Um, and uh, right. on Facebook, it's uh, Blue Check. There's a lot of fake pages of me. So make sure you go to the right one. And it's right, spelled right or whatever, because there's 10, 20, 30 fake pages on both. See, now y'all know Luke is the real deal because he's got that blue check, all right? Man, Luke, I appreciate you, man. Are you going to be in okay. Dallas this week? Yes, I will. I'll be over there. All right, well, I'll see you Friday at uh, Fly In Friday, man. Appreciate Sounds you so good. much. Thank you so much for joining us. Y'all hit up my guy, Luke. Follow his stuff. Great content, great motivation. I mean, this guy is a giver. He is a giver, and he just wants to help people and, and change the way you think about you know, finances and life and the spiritual side as well. And, man, I hope you love the day down in Miami, and I'm going to see you in Texas on Friday. Sounds good. I appreciate you for having me on here and everybody that viewed this. You know, I appreciate you for tuning in. Love you guys. All right. See you, brother. See ya.